بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. There are two arguments in the tradition of Islamic theology that are used to prove the existence of God. There's something called the argument from contingency and there's another argument called the kalam cosmological argument. Each of these arguments is based on demonstrating the impossibility of something called an infinite regress. But the kind of infinite regress is different in each argument. And I'm going to illustrate that in two lessons. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on the argument from contingency. This argument is more foundational and more important than the Kalam cosmological argument. And the infinite regress in this argument is very intuitive and easy to understand. It's easy to see that it's impossible. The infinite regress in this argument is a special kind of infinite regress. It's called the infinite regress of contingent dependencies. That's my name. I've given it this name in order to distinguish it from the second kind of infinite regress that I'll explain in a follow up lesson. Uh, when I describe the Kalam cosmological argument. So the argument from contingency, it says that every contingent thing depends on a necessary being to make it the way that it is. This is what the argument from contingency illustrate, illustrates. Um, you have this idea of a contingent thing. The universe is contingent. Everything about the universe is contingent. Take anything in the universe. Take the computer screen that's in front of you. It has a particular size. It doesn't have to have that size. It could have some other size. That means that something else gave it the size that it has. Because whenever there exists something that has a particular feature, and it doesn't have to have that feature, it means that feature didn't come from itself. If it came from itself, it would have that feature. But if, can, but if it can have that feature and it can also not have that feature, then that feature is not intrinsic to it. It means that it's given to it by something else. It means that it depends on something else. So the size of the computer screen in front of you was given to it by something else. That's what it means when you say that it is contingent. The same thing with its shape, the same thing with its location, the place that it is, it could have been in a different place. That means that the location that's it, that it is occupying was given to it by something else. Its mass, same thing. The fact that it's solid rather than liquid or, ga or gas, or the fact that it exists at all. Its existence is also contingent. So contingent things, they depend on something else because their characteristics are not intrinsic to themselves. And we know that they're not intrinsic non-inferentially. We can grasp their contingency without inference. And that non-inferential grasping, it becomes clearer and more definitive when we see these things change because whenever you see a quality change it's a visual demonstration of the fact that the thing that changed didn't have to have that quality it means that it was given to it by something else so the universe everything in it is contingent and contingent means it's dependent on something else and that means that it's made the way that it is by something else the argument from contingency is based on the idea that everything that is contingent needs a necessary being to make it the way that it is. A necessary being is a non-contingent thing. It's something that's not made the way that it is by anything else. And nothing that we actually experience in the universe is necessary. Everything that we experience in the universe is contingent. But we infer from the existence of contingent things in the universe, the existence of a necessary being that we don't touch, that we don't feel. But we can see when we look at the contingent things that the contingent things could not exist if this necessary being did not exist. Because 
every contingent thing needs a necessary being to make it the way that it is. Otherwise, its dependence is not fulfilled by anything else. This is easy to understand intuitively, but we can, uh, we can make it formal. We can formalize it by a... We can formalize it with a proof by contradiction. We'll learn more about proofs by contradiction later on in this course. But a proof by contradiction is where you assume that the thing that you want to prove is not the case. So over here, we want to prove that every contingent thing needs a necessary being to make it the way that it is. So we assume the opposite. We assume the contradictory opposite. We assume that it's false. That means that there is some contingent thing, at least one, that doesn't depend on a necessary being to make it the way that it is. So we're going to assume that that's the case. We're going to assume that there is some necessary, some contingent thing, it's that blue circle here, that does not depend on a necessary being. We are, I'm representing the necessary being with a... Um, red circle, which is not a good representation because a necessary being does not have a shape, does not have a size. All of those are contingent qualities. But this is just to get an idea across. So if that's the case, if it's true that some contingent thing doesn't depend on a necessary being to make it the way that it is, then that can only happen in one of two ways. Either you have something called an infinite regress of contingent things. This is the first possibility. Remember that you can't have a contingent thing without it depending on something else. So in order to ensure that every contingent thing is covered, its dependence is covered, you have to keep on going without end. Every time you have a contingent thing, before it there's another contingent thing. And since now there's a contingent thing before every other contingent thing, every contingent thing is covered. We call this an infinite regress of contingent dependencies. Infinite means never ending. It keeps on going and going and going. Regress is the opposite of progress. Progress is movement in the forward direction. Regress is movement in the backward direction. So we're taking a contingent thing now and we're moving back. In order for it to be the case, there's something prior to it that made it the way that it is. So this is an infinite regress of dependencies. This is a specific kind of infinite regress. Infinite regress isn't a one-size-fits-all, catch-all thing that, that we can treat generally. But in order, if we want to use it to, to argue for the existence of God in these two arguments, argument from contingency and the Kalam cosmological argument, then, they, then we have to be very specific about the kind of infinite regress that we are working with. And in the argument from contingency, we are working with a kind of infinite regress that is called an infinite regress of contingencies. So this is one way one way in which if there was no necessary being you could cover the dependency of every contingent thing you keep on going without end the other way in which you could cover the contingents the dependence of every contingency um, is by having a circular dependence so remember you can't have a contingent thing without its dependence being filled, covered by something else. So one way to do it is we just saw, you say it keeps on going without end. The other way to do it is to cycle back from one contingent thing to a previous one. So this is like saying, uh, so in this diagram, we have two contingent things. The first one depends on the second and the second one depends on the first. So now they're both covered. You could have a cycle with just one. So there's an arrow coming from one thing back to itself. That would be like saying the universe made itself. You can have two things like over here 
That's like saying that there's two universes, universe A made universe B, and B made A, the way that they are. You could have three, or you could have more. The idea is the same. They cycle back. And these are the only two ways in which you can cover the contingent dependence of every contingent thing through other contingent things. The first way is impossible because when you have an infinite regress of contingent dependencies, then there's nothing that's really fulfilling the dependency of anything else. We've seen this in the Why Islam is True course. There's also many of my lectures and videos online. I illustrate this uh, with a long line of people. Um, there's one person leaning on the person behind him. He needs the person behind him to hold him up. That other person needs the person behind him to hold him up. And then there's another person and the line continues in this way and it goes beyond the horizon and you can't see the end, you will conclude that at the end of the line, there is something that is not held up by anything that's supporting everything else. And the existence of additional people isn't improving the problem, it's making it worse because you have more contingent things to support. The contingent things, they simply pass the buck to the next thing. None of them actually does anything. So if you have an infinite regress of just contingent things, people leaning on each other, they would all be lying on the floor because there's nothing real for anything else to depend on. And that's why an infinite regress of dependencies doesn't fulfill any of the dependencies. Um, this is a complicated way of explaining something that's really straightforward and intuitive. You should, we can grasp it immediately. We can see that if the contingent things in the universe exist, then it's their dependency was not fulfilled by a never ending infinite regress of dependencies because that would not fulfill anything and nothing would exist. So this is false. This is not the case. The second option is also not the case. It's also impossible for you to have a circularly dependent collection because let's take a circularity with two things. If A was made the way that it is by B, then that means that B, B is prior to A. And if B was made the way that it is by A, it means that A is prior to B. And it's impossible for some for two things to be prior to and subsequent to each other at the same time. That's a log logical contradiction. And again, this is a complicated way of explaining something that's really straightforward and intuitive. Circular reasoning, nobody accepts it. Circular dependence is impossible. It's not fulfilled. In order for one to be fulfilled, the other one needs to be fulfilled first and vice versa. So both of these are impossible. And since these are the only two ways in which we can cover the dependencies of contingent things with other contingent things, that means that our initial assumption was false. And it's not the case that there is some contingent thing that doesn't depend on a necessary being. Instead, every contingent thing depends on a necessary being to make it exist. This argument is everywhere in the Quran. Um, I've, I have a five minute video demonstrating the Quranic argument from contingency. Um, and anyone who reads a classical tafsir like Baylawi with its super commentaries will find it virtually on every single page of the Quran. And this is the argument from contingency and it proves that the universe depends on a necessary being to make it exist. And an important part of this argument is demonstrating the impossibility of an infinite regress of contingent dependencies, a very particular kind of infinite regress. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.